That's kind of conversation to your soul. That's conversation to your soul. And then Prestige heads and welcome to American Prestige. I'm Danny Bessner. Here, as always, my friend and comrade Derek Davison, and we're very excited to welcome back to the podcast today Lily Lynch. Lily is one of the best writers out there, one of my favorite journalists, who uh, whose work regularly appears in the New Statesman as well as the <laughs> the New Left Review with Perry Anderson and his disciples. Lily, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for that very kind introduction, Dan. I'm really happy to be here with both of you guys. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, we really appreciate your being here. Uh, so even though uh, Lily, to give her location away, is in the workers' paradise of the Socialist Republic of Vietnam, um, she has spent most of her time in the last, I don't know, decade plus uh, yeah. in, in, in Eastern Europe. So before we get into this article you wrote on the neoliberal battle for Ukraine's reconstruction for the new statesman, I just wanted to ask you, what, what are things feel Feel like in Eastern Europe as this war between Russia and Ukraine continues to grind on? Um, well, I've spent a, log, uh, a big bulk of that time uh, that you just described in a, a very particular place, uh, which is Serbia. So uh, there's a, I would say, somewhat different uh, attitude towards the war there in general. Um, and Serbia tends to be a pretty uh, Russia sympathetic country, although um, the government is playing quite a double uh, game and they're funding, uh, or sorry, um, get, uh, arming Ukraine basically. So, um, but yeah, I've spent a bit of time this year in Kosovo and Albania as well. Um, I would say the mood is just in general is quite. Um, in generally kind of bleak, um, and there's a mass immigration to the West. Um, I, you know, the economic crisis that sort of began with COVID and, and uh, certainly got worse um, in the last two years, ha and especially in Serbia, where there are a quarter of a million Russians have moved and the cost of living has kind of gone through the roof, rents doubling and so forth. Um, you know, just more and more people leaving um, to the point where you just have like depopulation of the, of, of parts of these countries. So I, it has a kind of a bit of a depressed feel. That's my, that's my take. Maybe that, maybe I have a dark, dark view, uh, darker view than <laughs> others, you're, but it's depressing. You're, you're black pilled on, uh, on Eastern Europe. <laughs> I'm black pilled no, on, on the Balkans. Position. Um, <laughs> yeah. ha have you noticed uh, any sort of ideological transformation or is it just like the vibes are fucked? Because my, my thesis about the United States is that the vibes are fucked, but there's been absolutely no genuine ideological challenge that that which is fucking the vibes. So I'm just curious if, if it's just been the return to sort of like Balkan hyper-nationalism or is it not even that? I mean, that's actually really, like, the way you just described it um, is good. It's both of those. It's, it's post-ideological. There's, like, kind of no ideology, but there is this sort of, like, very ugly nationalist rhetoric that seems to be used to cover for the total economic, you know, crisis, it's particularly in Serbia. Um, the, you know, the, the economic situation is quite poor, and so you, I, it seems that there's been an escalation and, and then, or maybe a, a deterioration in rhetoric, kind of re a reversion to the 90s kind of style rhetoric. Um, but it's not deeply ideological. It, it's kind of it's a kind of a neoliberal economic policy with this sort of like thin veneer of like 90s rhetoric to kind of keep sort of like average working class voter of the government sort of um, uh, placated and, and um, numb to pretty, yeah, <laughs> black pills for sure. So speaking of neoliberalism, I think it might make sense now just to turn uh, to your article, which again, it's titled The Neoliberal Battle for Ukraine's Reconstruction. The country's post-war future is almost as riven as the war itself. And it appeared in late August in the New Statesman. 